Welcome back, Shalligators. Today, we are talking about a little bit of breaking news out of the Kardashian world. Scott Disick and, ugh, what's her name, Amelia Hamlin, planning on possibly moving in together. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why? What? Oh, God. I know, just not even words, just like sounds of like, oh, just disgust and disappointment. Because this doesn't seem to be like the healthiest step for a 19-year-old girl to move in with a 37-year-old father of three. But maybe it is. Maybe this is exactly what Scott needs to sort of like snap him into a long-awaited adulthood. Maybe this is healthy for her and she can feel like she's got some grounding stability. But let me tell you this. As someone who has lived with two boyfriends, well, one who became her husband, I can tell you that moving in with someone is not something to be taken lightly. And it's difficult to know when the time is right. Are you close enough? Is this, uh, is it logistically, does it make sense? Is it smarter to move in together? Is it smarter to stay apart? I'm gonna break down the logistics of the emotions, the finances, and just all of these components that you have to think about when you are thinking about cohabitating. So we're gonna talk about whether or not you should move in with someone and when to know that the time is right or wrong and what to do if you're realizing I might have made a mistake. We're going to cover it all. But before we get started, just want to remind you to follow me on Instagram at ChallenXO. Also, head on over to Flays. It's our uncensored platform. We can get a little spicy. We're talking about wieners. Talking about foreskin. <laughs> We're talking about circumcised versus uncircumcised. Um, dudes who are big, small. How to tell if a guy is going to be big or small. We've got some BJ tips. All that good stuff over there. So head on over. Also, if you would like a little video shout out from me, a pep talk, you can book me on Cameo here in the US. Or if you're an international chickadee, head over to Memo. I am now on Memo. I'm so excited to be part of that community. It's a great little platform if you want a question to answer that way. Or you can find me on my website, shallonlester.com, if you want to submit a question over there. I love to chat with you guys. So, Scott and Amelia. So this is what sources, them, are saying. Ugh, Lord. So Scott is moving to Miami temporarily because of his, he has some sort of like, mm, you know how like autoimmune diseases, they can like lay dormant for a little while. A lot of diseases can, not just autoimmune ones. And then like something will like trigger them, like some stress, and then they like flare back to life. That is Scott Disick, but with douchebaggery. That is his latent autoimmune disease. That is a thing that is inside him that is constantly trying to kill him. The way fibromyalgia or MS might, right? This is Scott's true Achilles heel. Sorry. Ugh. By the way, do you like how my, my face and my neck are completely different colors? Thank you, sunburn. I am like the biggest sunscreen obsessive in the world, in the world. But if I'm in the sun for like five direct minutes, my skin's like, ah, my skin's so dry out here. What is like a, do you guys have a body lotion or a body oil to keep your skin hydrated? I use like the Vaseline oil gel thing. I usually like it, but I feel like it just kind of stopped working. It's like, I can't even deal with this. So I will take your suggestions. Anyway, back to these two. Sorry, moved everything. So Scott's moving to Miami temporarily and Amelia evidently is thinking about moving in with him. Okay. So the source said, Amelia is planning on moving in with Scott. Scott was lonely when he and Sophia Ritchie broke up, which is one of the reasons he and Amelia got together so quickly. We'll unpack that. They've been getting more serious for now, him and Amelia. But Scott's been having a good time with Amelia. These, these two sentences don't, don't align. They've been getting a bit more serious for now. Scott's been having a good time with Amelia. You know what that actually translates to? She is stone cold in love with him. And he's like, eh. this previous sentence, he was lonely when he broke up with Sophia. So that's why they got together so quickly. Uh, let's see. Casting the role of Scott Disick's girlfriend. Who's next? Who's next? You? What's your name? What's your name, sweetheart? Amelia? Well, you want to be famous? You want to be famous? Can you take pictures of your own ass? You can? Great. You're in. Come on. You got the job. Yeah. No, come on. Get your shit. We're going. Is that how Scott picks girlfriends? Because based on that quote, that's exactly how. He was lonely and so he just needed like a warm body, just a seat filler and hey, great, three years younger. By the way, this article calls Sophia Ritchie a supermodel. Ah, she's definitely pretty. Supermodel, I don't know. They also call Amelia a supermodel. Oh, Amelia, Amelia, Amelia. We've talked about her before. I worry about her. She's so young and she just seems so insecure. She's 19. Who among us, who that isn't like a weird narcissist or sociopath is not 
sort of insecure and malleable at 19. I mean, of course you are. But that's why you don't date men who are almost 40 with three kids and the messiest possible history, right? She just, one of you guys said it right. She seems scared of her own shadow. And she just does. And I, I just look at her pictures. And I'm like, I know what you're doing. You're doing what every other 19 year old is doing. Like these like fake sexy Kylie shots. And like, you're getting more attention from it because you're like famous. Why? I'm still working that one out. But I just see her as so incredibly susceptible to someone like Scott. And this quote, I don't know if this is coming from her camp, but this does not seem to be like a positive quote in her direction. Like, well, Scott's lonely, so Amelia's there, and they're getting more serious, and she wants to move in, and he's, like, having a good time. Moving in with someone is like a marriage. If you get nothing else out of this video, get this. If you break up with someone that you're living with, you are getting divorced. It is a divorce. It is financially ruinous, emotionally devastating, logistically nightmarish, okay? It is not something you enter into lightly. Now, these two people, both rich, have a lot of other options. They can enter into things like this much more lightly because they have a financial security net, right? Amelia has her fucking parents that she can go back to. Most 19-year-olds still live with their parents. They live in a dorm. They're not like shacking up with a celebrity. They're not living on the beach in Malibu, you know, because they're modeling and paying their own way. Like, that's just not the reality for most people. Sorry, I'm so, so hot out here. Um, yeah, two different tones. It's fat, fantastic. So this is just not a typical situation. And we shouldn't always look at celebrities and be like, well, they're doing it. I mean, they moved in with their much older boyfriend, so why shouldn't I? Because honey, ain't nothing for free. If you aren't an independently wealthy young woman moving in with another independently wealthy young older man, if there is a financial differential, it's not going to be in your favor, babe. It's not. And don't you think Scott knows that? And don't you think that's why he chooses these young women? We've talked about this a million times. He chooses women that he can control and mold. Why do you think they all end up looking like Courtney? Look at Amelia. Look at just the amount of makeup she wears in her, in her photos. I mean, it takes a lot to look like you're wearing a lot of makeup. I have drag queen makeup on right now. Like I do it in the mirror and I'm like, huh, oh. like I can't even walk around town. I look so intense, but on camera, it's like nothing. It reads as nothing. I look natural. So if you are reading as wearing a lot of makeup on camera, girl, it is like put on with a spackle. Why am I even bringing this up? I'm not like makeup shaming her. This again speaks to maybe she's not that confident in herself yet, you know? And again, that's normal at 19, but that is not the time to make a huge life decision like moving in with someone. And I don't care what you're telling yourself at the beginning of this. It's just temporary. It's just for COVID. It's just for the summer. I can move out whenever. Like, I'm not, I don't, I'm not concerned about getting married. Bah, bah, bah. You want to know a statistic that I always go back to? When two people move in together, they have an 85% chance of getting married. 85. At exactly a year and a half. If they're not engaged or taking serious steps towards getting married, that percentage drops down to 11 11% chance that they're going to get married. It's not nothing. But when you have people, it's like, well, she's lived with her boyfriend for seven years. I bet they'll get married. I only bet 11% that they'll get married. I bet they won't. If I was a betting man, I would not take that bet, right? Why are we talking about this? Because when you move in with someone, that clock starts. And that means the reason we have this data is because typically people look at moving in together as a step towards marriage. They don't look at it as, well, whatever. I mean, I'll do it for now. It's like financially smart. On some level, they are forecasting bigger and bigger levels of this relationship manifesting, right? And you should do that. We cannot run our lives in this willy nilly, I don't know, I'm just going to try, whatever. Not that we shouldn't experiment and gather data for sure. But we have to be judicious about what we're doing and the outcomes. Because like I said, you break up with someone you live with, atomic bomb in your life. The first time I lived with someone, it's temporary. It's only going to be for a few months while he looked for a new apartment, whatever. In my studio apartment in Manhattan at the time, I was like, I don't know, 27 or something. My hateful ex-boyfriend, Jason. And well, that's awful. It's so funny, like... People who like hate me, they, they're like desperate to find out about my husband. Like, you won't. <laughs> you won't. But um, they, they always get a picture of Jason and they think it's him and they think his name is Henry. 
for some reason. And they're like, yeah, Henry cheated on her and left her. It's like, no, okay, not only is that not my husband's name, that's not the name of anyone I've ever dated or even met. I've never even met a man named Henry. And it's certainly not that person. The whole thing is just so bizarre. Like, do you guys even need me for this conversation? It's like fan fiction at this point. Anyway, I digress. So Jason moved in with me and it was, it was supposed to be temporary, all this stuff. We broke up because he stayed up all night one night hacking into my phone after watching my thumbs put in my code for six weeks so he can go through all my emails. Psychopath. I hope you're watching this, babe. You're still a lunatic. You're still a lunatic. So clearly we broke up. I was like, I don't abide this. As crazy as I can be, I never snoop. I think it's so incredibly disrespectful. So disrespectful. We broke up and he moved his stuff out and his stuff consisted of like five suits and three pairs of shoes. It was literally this much in my closet. But I remember coming home after he had, he's like, all right, all my stuff is out, whatever, we're done. And I looked at the closet and that gap, and I was like, oh, it was awful. I still remember it. And I didn't even like him. He was the worst. But it was still that jarring. It was terrible. Now picture it as someone you do love and a relationship you did think was going to work that you wanted to work. And oh, actually, he's not moving his stuff out. You're moving your stuff out. And then, wait, where do you live? That's an interesting question. Very few of us just have six months of rent just sitting in an account in case we need it. You know, it's always like, mm, have an emergency fund. Okay, thank you. Fucking thank you. I know that. Don't you think I would have had 30 extra thousand dollars just sitting there if I could have, you know, at that time? This is not always realistic for us. We, most people live at their means or beyond their means. So even if you're cohabitating with someone to save money, very rarely does that actually happen. Oh, we're going out to dinner. Someone's paying half the bills, blah, blah, blah. You don't know that a storm might be around the corner. And when it hits, what are you going to do? But let's, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's say you guys got to move out, right? Or he moves out. And he doesn't just take a few pieces of clothes. What if he takes the couch and the TV, the car, the dog, things that you love and need. Now you're like, okay, emotionally, I can physically see the representation of this person no longer in my life. There is a physical absence of him. Also, I have to replace all this stuff that maybe I didn't want to or I can't afford to do. That's the best case scenario. That means you can stay in this dwelling and you can afford to pay for it on your own. What if you can't, which is a lot of people's situation, because why would you move someone into your house if you didn't need help paying for things. I mean, you love them, yeah, of course. But for a lot of us, this fuels cohabitation. Certainly in New York, that is the case. I saw that all the time. It's an expensive place to live. It's like, well, I could live in the studio apartment and he could live in one, and I'm like taking Ubers back and forth all the time, or we could just live together. We're gonna break that down the side. Well, no, we will now. My best friend says it right. She's like, I don't care if you spend six nights a week, seven nights a week at your boyfriend's house, it is not the same as living together. It's not. Because you have this emotional safety net of, I have somewhere to go. I have an escape. I have a respite. I have a home. I have a shelter. And if he starts popping off, bye. We talked before in a video about Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell about how I think this, and they think the secret to their long lasting relationship is that they're not married. And Goldie said it right. She's like, we choose to be with each other every day. We choose it. I choose to be with you. It's not a contract. It's not, I don't want to get a, lawyer, a divorce lawyer. It's, it's choice. Same with not living together. You are choosing to have this person in your life. It's not like they walk through the door and like, you again. Mm -hmm. And it can feel that way. When you have the option to go to your own place, even if it's a place you don't love, even if it's a room with other roommates who are annoying you, it's your parents' house, whatever. You are more of a savage in this relationship. You are truly a better girlfriend. Why? Because you inherently put up with less shit. Because you have options. You have a way out. Had I been able to afford to... I mean, I could have, but like... Okay, so I moved in with my husband. We were dating. And my apartment got sold. So I basically had... They're like, you can buy it or you can move. It's like... That happened to Carrie Bradshaw on Sex and the City. And he was like, <gasps> move in with me. Like, he was so excited. He's like, I've been waiting for this. He was so excited, so excited, so excited. And I was like, Ugh. I was very, 
very hesitant. I'm, I had the whole bad experience with Jason. And I'm like, I'm an only child. I need a lot of space. I need a lot of alone time. He's like, that's fine. I don't care. It's fine. Ah. And it was wonderful moving it. It really was. Like, it was the happiest times of my life. The nesting and the cooking together and the decorating. <laughs> I'll never forget. His whole apartment was like brown, like shade, 50 shades of brown, beige, brown, brown, brown. And I was like, what color can we add to this so it doesn't look like just this, like a, like a giant saddlery? I was like, maybe, what do you think about like lavender? And he's like, oh, I love lavender. I was like, really? He's like, yes, get a bunch of lavender stuff. I brought home all this lavender stuff. He's like, what is this? What is this? I was like, it's lavender. He's like, no, that's lavender. He pointed at something beige. I'm like, babe, that's beige. <laughs> He's like, you thought I wanted this color, this light purple? It's like, that's what lavender is. It was funny, but <laughs> so that all went back. But I had fun. You know, that was great. But then when I started to have trepidations about a relationship, about whether getting married was the right move at that time, I couldn't afford to leave. I couldn't afford to. You know, we were sinking money into the wedding. And again, people live at their means. I was living at my means. So was he. And he made a lot more money than me. He was like, you know, he's a very high powered person. But so had I had another place to go to, it would have given our relationship some breathing room. And ultimately, I think we could have gone the distance. But financially, we didn't have that freedom. And what do we always say about financial freedom? It's the only freedom. It's the only freedom. I know what you're thinking. Well, Shallon, hello, moving in with someone will give me more financial freedom. Maybe, baby girl, if you're bad with money living by yourself or with roommates, you're going to be bad with money living with a partner unless you address why you're bad with money. Why do you run up your credit card bills? Why do you need to flex with this fake Gucci and fake Hermes? Why? Get to the root of that. You can import 10 other people's incomes. You can win the lottery tomorrow. It's not going to matter. You're going to be right back in this place. I mean, we literally hear about lotto winners. The vast majority of them end up poor again because they never had a positive relationship with money. So before you move in with someone, are you willing to have that talk with yourself about money? Are you willing to have that talk about money with them? You want to play it a grown up? Be a fucking grown up. Don't LARP around like you're being an adult and you're not. I mean, you can, but it's going to backfire. Oh my God. Because look, you, if you live with someone, you move in with someone and you break up, think about every other breakup you've had in your life. When that boy broke your heart, when that fuck boy ghosted you, was there ever an element of, and I don't know where I live now? No, there wasn't. You had a foundation of stability in the most basic category, shelter and food, all of this stuff. Maybe it wasn't your perfect place. They're often not. But you had that stability. This time, Add in more heartbreak because you, on some level, maybe think that this relationship is going to go the distance, right? Even if you don't, if you're like, whatever, we'll see how it goes. Your lives are so much more enmeshed. They just are. I mean, look at how I felt about Jason when he left it, when his clothes moved. Like he was still such a part of my life. That hurt me. And again, I didn't even like him. This is someone ostensibly you do like. Even if you don't though. They're a part of your life. So that's gone. And also with it is the concept of your stability, your financial stability, your logistical stability. Does that sound fun to you? No? Okay. Are you prepared to get divorced at 21, 22, 25? Because again, you break up, that's what it is. You got to divide everything. There's bills still coming in. If you're not prepared to think about these things, if you're not prepared to have those sticky, icky conversations about money, figure out how you're dividing the bills. You're not ready for this and you don't have to be. You don't have to be. You don't have to be. Amelia Hamlin at 19, do you think she's like, let's sit down and talk about our 401ks and our diversified portfolios? No! She's like, I don't know, like I'm going to come with like my stuff and like be by the pool and think about just selfies. Remember when I said that nothing's for free? That's Scott's house. That's not Amelia's house. Yeah, she makes, she makes money. She probably makes more money than the average 19-year-old, but she doesn't make as much money as he does. She doesn't have the flexibility and the financial freedom that he does. So guess who has the power? He does. The richest person and the person who cares the least always wins. And Scott is both of those things. He doesn't give a fuck about her. And he doesn't give a fuck about money, right? He's got plenty of it. 
So she comes home one day with a bunch of friends, a bunch of guy friends he doesn't like. He's like, get the fuck out of my house. My house. What's she going to say? This is my house too. <laughs> really, is it? What bills do you pay? Are you on the deed? Is that your car in the driveway or is that my car I let you drive? Now, okay, they're in a bit of a unique situation because they're both celebrities. But if a rich dude, not even rich, but someone who has more financial power than you might, is offering you this honeypot of a deal. You won't have to worry about this. You don't have to worry about that. Baby girl, ain't nothing for free. You are paying for that either with your time, with your empathy. You got to listen to his stupid stories about work, with your obedience, or you're paying with nature's credit card, your pussy. You're paying somehow. It is not an equal relationship. And like, why would it be? If I moved a dude into my house who wasn't contributing financially either as much as I was, no, I wouldn't say, yeah, you can hang that stupid neon St. Pauli girl sign in my dining room. I don't think so. This is my house. And I mean, like, I always say that, like, Instagram, like, this is my house on my channel and YouTube. But this is my literal house. And you're not. No, you don't like it. You can fucking leave. I've got the power. I've got the money. That's the way the world works. And if that sounds icky to you, if that makes you mad, well, I don't want that situation, then don't move in with someone. Don't move in with someone. But I know. Now you're probably thinking, that's not why I want to move in with someone. I love him. And we have a good relationship. And I just think it's time. Okay, good. Great. Let's go back to that statistic. When two people move in together, 85% chance of getting married. At exactly a year and a half, drops down to 11. Why? Why a year and a half? Well, the theory is you've gone through all the holidays. You know each other's biorhythms. You know each other's attitudes about money. Ostensibly, you have had some sort of conversation about the future. Kids, where you want to live, goals, all this stuff. You know how someone recreates, which as we've spoken about in previous videos, is a huge pillar of compatibility. How do they spend a Saturday morning? Are they up at six and we're hiking a mountain? And you're like, ah, I'm hungover from last night. Are you compatible at the basic level on the, on the micro and on the macro? You should know this. And you know what? You do after a year and a half. On some level, you know at least what 89% of people do. And so when it's like, oh, I'm, I'm sure he's going to propose. We've lived together for four years, but I'm sure he's going to propose. Are you willing to roll the dice on an 89% chance of failure on that? Maybe, maybe not. On some level, people have decided at a year and a half. So if you're like tick fucking top, I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I know people, who, yeah, they, they've gotten engaged after a long time. But I know a lot of people who have it. And when I'm thinking about it, it's about a one in 10 ratio, almost exactly that 11%, right? I don't want to roll the dice on my future like that. I don't want you guys to do that either. So my point is, if you're going to move in with someone, have those sticky conversations before, before you even go house hunting, before the leases are signed, before you're picking out that cloud couch that looks like the Kardashian couch. Fuck, I want one of those. Have those conversations. If you're afraid to, that's a red flag. I didn't have those conversations with my husband. I didn't. I was a huge wuss. I didn't. I was immature. And it torpedoed our relationship. I mean, it was a huge factor. It was a huge factor, you know? Because I didn't have those conversations, he intimated at times he felt not used, but like I wasn't as serious about this relationship because I wasn't willing to have serious conversations, right? And as women, we think the opposite. Oh my God, we can't bring this stuff up. We can't. He's going to think I'm crazy. A man's going to think you're crazy for asking about your own future. A man's going to think you're crazy for being bold enough to talk about money, which is literally what we're all on this planet trying to do, get money and have a better life. If a man thinks you're crazy, think, hey, hey dude, you know what? Thank you so much for telling me that that's how you feel about a woman who is judicious about her future, we are done. Bye. I would rather know that before that cloud couch is picked out, wouldn't you? If you are afraid to bring these things up with someone, he's not invested in the relationship. And that's how my husband felt about me. She's not having these conversations. It's because she's not thinking about the future. She's not thinking about estate planning and, and retirement benefits. And she's not, she doesn't want to talk about it because it doesn't matter to her. And it mattered very much to me, but I was such a wuss. I didn't know how to have these conversations. And, and I just, 
I, I've got like my own weird attitude with money. We all do. Money is a very complicated relationship. And I found a lot of links between attitudes with food that we have as women and attitudes with money. I'll keep myself just a little fat, just a little fat, not like fat, but like fat for me, you know? And I'll keep myself just a little stressed about money. That's how I used to operate until I looked at both of these things in the face. And it's like, I don't want to live like this anymore. I want to be thin and fit. I want to be rich. Let's change the attitude. Let's really look at it. But I didn't hit that point until the damage was already done in my marriage. And I was like, I couldn't have done this. A, I couldn't have done this a year ago. No, 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 no. Couldn't have done that. Okay. It's tough, but I did it eventually. And okay, that matters. So have those conversations ASAP. If he doesn't want kids and you do, don't move in with him. If he's like, yeah, I don't know, maybe marriage one day. By one day, it needs to mean a year and a half to two and a half years. Statistically, statistically, don't move in with him then. Mm, yeah, you know, I really love to get up at like 11 a.m. on a Saturday and that's cool. You like to hike. Maybe that's not going to work out long term. Maybe if he's messy, do you think that you moving in and now contributing physical labor is going to make him less messy? No, no. When people cohabitate, a woman's financial situation improves, but her, uh, her, I guess like schedule situation is worse because now she's not just picking up after herself. She's picking up after him overwhelmingly study after study after study, recent ones, not ones from like the middle ages show that women do the housework. The way housework is divided is vastly disproportionate in favor of women. I mean, women are doing it all. Same sex couples though, are more prone to dividing housework evenly. They don't abide by the same, you know, typical gender roles. Maybe interestingly, one study, um, men, like a woman taking care of the children is referred to as like parenting. Men taking care of the children is referred to as like childcare and babysitting. If some other fucker knocked me up and is like, I'll babysit the kids tonight. I'll be like, you what? Sorry, I'm sorry. Say that again. Say that again into my ears that I've been listening to toddlers scream. You will babysit your children? I don't think so. Men also listed their children as a hobby. Hobbies. Women listed taking showers. It is not the same. This is why I always go back to my version of feminism. I don't want to be treated equal. I want to be treated better because of shit like this. Because men are babysitting their kids. Play with my kids is a hobby. A woman dealing with her children is not a hobby-based thing. I digress. I digress. I digress. But my point is, these roles, you're not, you're not the exception to this. We have to assume that, hey, if this is what's happened to 89% of the population, it's probably what's going to happen to us. You know? We're probably not an outlier statistic that we're just like, out of the way of this. Maybe we can be if we have those sticky conversations up front. Maybe we can be. If we're like, look, I hate cleaning the shower. I'll clean 10 toilets before I clean the shower. You clean the showers. I'll do the vacuuming. You cook. I'll clean up. You walk the dog. I'll pick up the poop. Let's write this shit down. Let's ha if you got into a business agreement with someone, you do the marketing. I do the logistics. You do the books. I do the PR. You would break it down. Marriage is a partnership. Love is logistics. If you can't have these conversations before you move in with someone, why are you doing it? The only answer is an emotional getaway car. I hate living with my mom. I hate my roommates. I want to get out of this small town. I want a bigger place, a nicer place. That's natural to think that. But maybe, baby girl, you got to be your own savior. I look at Amelia Hamlin and Scott Disick and I'm like, I can see why she wants to move in with him. His life is beautiful and he knows everyone in Miami. She's insecure. She's young. She probably wants to get out from under the thumb of her parents. Her parents are, they love those girls, but they are, they're very much stage parents. You gotta be famous, do this. I can see why she wants some independence. Independence will never be found by glomming onto someone else. That is the inverse of independence. We have to manufacture independence. And you know what? It's hard. It is to become financially independent, logistically independent. Hey, you know what? I like where I live. I don't need anyone in here to fill the time if it's messy, I clean it up. I'm responsible for my own life and my own happiness. Blech. Why can't I just make someone else responsible? Well, you can, but there's a price tag to that. There's no such thing as a free lunch. And like I said, you're going to be paying with your time, the back burnering of your goals, your friends, your hobbies, your timeline about maybe when you want to have kids or do stuff like that. When you feel like having sex or don't, 
You just want to sit around in your feety pajamas and watch Downton Abbey when you're PMSing? Nope. Where's dinner? I want to fuck. My friends are coming over. <sighs> Does that sound like freedom to you? Not to me. I love people and I loved my husband and moving in, but it was not more freedom. It was less. It was not more independence. It was less. And I loved him. And at the time I was happy to bind my life with his, but that changed because I wasn't ready for it because I hadn't had those honest conversations with myself nor with him. And eventually you realize you cannot build something on a foundation of sand. If you don't have that foundation of knowledge about yourself and about what they want, the foundation of finances, right? The foundation of goals. What are you building on top of exactly? And how long do you think that structure will stand? So be very honest with yourself before you move in with someone. There's no rush. <laughs> My therapist at the time, she's like, it's like suicide. You can always do it tomorrow. I was like, that's a very dark example, but I get it. It's true. You can always move in with someone next week, next year. Oh, that perfect apartment, that perfect house. There's going to be more, right? It's okay. Take your time. Get yourself where you need to be. If you're really serious that this is the man I'm going to marry, this is the relationship I want for the rest of my life. There's no rush. Make sure everything is perfect inside, like within yourself. Make sure the communication is perfect. Make sure the goals and the alignment is perfect. If you truly love this person, do right by them. Honor that relationship. Honor the commitment that you're both about to make through honesty. Honoring is honesty. I'm curious to see what's going to go on with Scott and Amelia. I mean, I think we know. It's going to go horrible. Just, it'll go great for him until they break up and she's left like the shell of a young woman, which is, you know what? Amelia, you come right over to me. I'll straighten you out like a piece of wire. We're going to get you where you need to be. Don't worry. Challenge here to save the day. Uh, join me tomorrow. We're going to be breaking down the latest Kardashian episode. I know so much Kardashian stuff. If there's other things you want to see and hear about, let me know. Also, like I said, head over to Flay's to get a whole bunch of videos on Vix. I'll see you guys later.